Hello everyone and welcome back to another exciting chess game from the history of chess and in the chess game. I'm going to show you another instructive chess game by Mikhail Tal. And this chess game is from 1956 from the Soviet Union chess championship. Well in the chess game as you can see Mikhail Tal has the black pieces and his opponent is Abraham Kashin. I'd like to give you a few informations about Mikhail Tal's opponent because his opponent himself was very interesting. So let's check out. Abraham Kashin is a Russian chess international master and he was correspondence chess grandmaster. He was born in 1923 and listen to this. He fought in the Second World War. He became a soldier in the Red Army. He had both legs amputated in the Battle of Stalingrad. Can you believe that? He fought in the Battle of Stalingrad. And then he played chess game against Mikhail Tal. Unfortunately, he lost both of his legs. So he was using walking sticks when he was playing with Mikhail Tal, for example. But the most important thing is that he survived the war. And after the World War II, he worked as an English teacher and chess coach. He had lots of important students as grandmasters, coaches, journalists and commentators. Anyway, so this is the short information about Abraham Kashin. He was born in 1923. And I'm also going to give you one another interesting information about this chess player. But I'm saving that to the end of this chess video. So let's check out what happened in this chess game between Mikhail Tal and his opponent. And in this chess game, once again, Mikhail Tal has the black pieces and Tal's opponent starts the game with playing e4. We have the Sicilian defense. And let me skip these opening moves faster. Because there is nothing very interesting. Just standard moves, standard developing moves. And as you can see, Kashin is opening the file. And in this position, things are getting heating up. Mikhail Tal is targeting the people, defending. And now, after capturing the pawn, we have queen to h4 and threatening checkmate in two moves, defending, which was an unusual move for Mikhail Tal's standards. Going back, Mikhail Tal doesn't like to go back. He always likes to move forward like a tank. So after knight to f8, we have rook takes on d4, capturing the bishop, only then capturing and lifting the rook, rook to e2, infiltrating, defending, and then doubling the rooks, and already Mikhail Tal is better. He is also attacking the people. How to defend? Defending like this. Obviously in this position white has some weaknesses, and if pushing the pawn and defending, of course maybe capturing the pawn with the queen. So in this position after rook to b4, we have rook to d2, defending the d-pawn, queen to e7, and Mikhail Tal wants to exchange the queens. Kashin is not interested, he is going back and attacking the rook. But this move has a downside, what is the downside? Well Mikhail Tal captured the pawn, rook takes on d5, saving the rook, and the bishop is pinned, we have queen to f2. If capturing the rook, then queen takes on e1, obviously. So capturing the pawn, and then queen to f2, defending the rook, defending the bishop, developing the knight, finally. The knight was looking too quiet, and now Mikhail Tal's knight is going to be one of the heroes of this chess game. You're going to see, after knight to d7, we have rook to f4. And this is the interesting position of this chess game. As you can see, Kashin is attacking the pawn, attacking on f7. Well, in this position, Mikhail Tal is a pawn up because of capturing the pawn with the rook. What would you do in this position, attacking the f pawn and it seems dangerous if capturing the pawn? Rook to f7 doesn't look good, isn't it? It looks ugly and dangerous. Also attacking the queen. Well, Mikhail Tal played the move which defined his style. Mikhail Tal is not going back or he is not pushing the pawn for defending. He played knight to c5, leaving the pawn. Rook takes on f7 by Kashin. Knight takes on d3, capturing 
the bishop and attacking the queen, but then queen to f3. What now? Can you see the threat? There is double threat. Both attacking the knight and attacking the queen. What now? What would you do in this position? Maybe defending the queen comes to mind. Would you defend the queen in this position? Mikhail Tal is not defending the queen. He played rook to e1. Unbelievable move by Tal. An unbelievable move. But let's take it back. Of course, in this position, if something like queen to e6, then rook to f8, check, and this is getting checkmated for black. And if queen to d8, maybe, then capturing the knight, and white is better, white is clearly better, and black also has the isolated pawn, as you can see, and this is far more better for white, and black is losing in this position, according to the computer chess engine. So black has weaknesses. So after queen to f3, both attacking the knight and the queen. And Mikhail Tal played rook to e1, sacrificing the queen. But we have queen to d5, and this is lining the queen with the king. And the threat is very simple, not capturing the queen. But rook to f8, that's double check, check, mate, threatening checkmate. What would you do in this position? Maybe capturing the rook. But if capturing the rook, I am not 100% sure. But then capturing back with the rook. Check. After blocking or moving the king. Capturing the knight. And again. Maybe white is better. What would you do in this position? It is black to move. This is attacking the queen. The queen is under attack. And also threatening checkmate. Mikhail Tal in this position. Captured the rook, sacrificing the queen. Did you see this move? What a move. Well, in this position, why did Kashim play queen to d5? This is also a question of the day. This is also interactive, so let's take it back. This was the idea of Mikhail Tal. If capturing the queen, simply, what happens then? What would you do in this position once again? This is a very simple question. Would you capture the rook? Well, of course, capturing the f rook is the winning move. Because after capturing back, this is the only move. Then rook takes on e7. And black rook and the knight is working incredibly well together. And in this position, capturing the knight is not possible because of the back rank threat. Check, mate. So in this position, incredibly, white has nothing good to do. There is nothing good for white in this position. Rook to e1 is coming. And white can do nothing about it. So let's say b3. But then rook to e1. And this is all over for white. What an incredible and amazing chess game by Mikhail Tal. As you can see. The queen is pit. And white can do nothing about it. In this position. So this is why. If white had captured the queen. He would have some problems. So, not capturing, but lining the queen with the king in the real game. And then queen takes on f7. This is what happened by Mikhail Tal. Capturing, sacrificing the queen. But now what? Again in this position, threatening to capture the rook. And after capturing back with the queen, rook to e1 is coming. So we have king to g1. Let's make a random move. Let's say g3. Giving the flight square for the king, but then capturing the rook. Queen takes on f1, and once again we have rook to e1, and this is winning the chess game. Winning the game. Winning the queen. The queen is pinned, so let's take it back once again. Capturing the queen, moving the king, and king to g1. What would you do in this position? Well, this is a very simple question. This is probably the easiest question that I ever asked in this chess game. What would you do? Well, in this position, Mikhail Tal captured the rook, of course. And we have queen takes on f1. King takes is not possible because of rook to e1. Check, mate. After rook takes on f1, queen takes on f1. And then rook to e1. And Kashin reside. What a game. What an incredible chess game by Mikhail Tal. A highly entertaining and also instructive chess game by Mikhail Tal. Once again, the queen is pinned. Mikhail Tal used that back rank perfectly.
and also his knight Enteruk was working extremely well. So the possible continuation. What else? This is pinning the queen, so capturing the rook and this is over for white. Black has the knight. So in this position, Cashin captured the queen and it looks like he has the queen. But in this position, he really doesn't have anything to do. There is no back rank threat. If queen to f8, then capturing the queen with the rook. And white can't capture back with the f rook because the rook is pinned. Pinning. So king to g1 and capturing the rook. And then rook to e1. And Cashin resigned. And thank you very much for watching. And oh, before forgetting, Mikel Taz's opponent was indeed a very interesting chess player. Let me tell you one last thing about Mikel Tal's opponent. Tal's opponent, Abram Keshin, who was born in 1923, is still living. He is 98 years old right now. He is alive. Today he is alive. I am sure that he would tell you some very interesting memories about Mikel Tal. He is actually and probably one of the only surviving people who played chess game when Mikel Tal was young. So he is still alive, but this is not the only thing. He is actually currently the oldest living chess master as an active player. He is currently the world's oldest master on the active list. He is also active at the same time. So he is going to be 100 years old very soon. And he is probably still going to be active. Interesting, isn't it? By the way, this picture is from 1995 of Abraham Kachin. Interesting. So I'm sure that he has lots of interesting memories about Mikhail Tal. And I'm also sure that only he knows those memories. And this was the picture of Anton Kashin from 1995. And he is the oldest living chess master as an active player. He is still active, almost at the 100 years of age. And thank you very much for watching. This was the brilliant and highly entertaining, instructive chess game by Mikhail Tal, and I hope to see you next time. Take care, and bye-bye.